Sister Irene and Dung Guan. Secrets of the Afterlife, The Death of a Sinner My name is Irene and Dung Gu. I died twice. The third time was not death but just a crisis and in that crisis, the Lord Jesus gave me another specific message. St. The first time I died was during my baby delivery. This was on the 1 of January 2005. I was working in the protocol service in the church. I was serving God just like many other believers in the protocol service but I was a hypocrite. When I come to church, I am a servant of Christ but when I go home, I was behaving like an unbeliever. Let me tell you, believer, if you come to church and you have a double life, God will judge you. Nothing is hidden before his face, even if no one sees you. I knew all the dances of secular music but I was a servant in the church. Some time later I was pregnant and after nine months of pregnancy, I was supposed to deliver the baby. I managed to deliver the baby correctly but after delivery, I suffered a hemorrhage. This happened when I was sleeping. When I tried to wake up, it was too late. Doctors did intervene but it was too late. In fact, I died three times on that day. In the first instance, I heard a balloon exploding. After the popping sound of the balloon, I went out of my body. When I went out of my body, I noticed that I was not touching the ground. I was standing in space. Then I heard the midwife who was checking my body saying to her colleague, she is no longer here. She has expired. She is dead. When this midwife said that, I got to where she was standing in order to tell her that I am alive. Here. But when I tried to hold her hand, I realized that I touched an empty space. I was surprised. Because it was my first time ever to experience this kind of things. Then the second nurse said, she is effectively dead. When she said that, I came close to her. In order to hold her shoulder and tell her that I am not dead. But when I passed my arm over her shoulder, I saw my arm going through her like in an empty space. I was puzzled and in wonder. I tried to touch these midwives and I was telling both of them that I could see and hear them. I came to realize that none of them were seeing and hearing me. I came to the realization that there was no contact, connection and union between these people and me. Th. This event happened on the 17th of January 2005 in the Second Street in Musoso Hospital in Kinshasa. You can go verify and just ask about a woman by the name of Irene Ndungu. That delivered at 11 p.m. They will surely give you information about me. Beloved, after failing to touch these midwives, I came to realize that there was no communication with them since they could not hear or see me. I realized that we were in two different worlds. They were in one dimension and I was in another dimension. When I realized this, I stepped back away from them and I began to cry. I started to repeat that I am not dead. I am here with you. I am not dead. But their attention was on my corpse. They were in an emergency situation. Then I saw them reanimating my body. I stood around them crying and saying to each of them, I am not dead. I refused to accept the fact I was dead. I kept saying to them, I am not dead. While I was crying. Beloved, after death, you will not be able to contact or communicate with your loved ones or the people around. You won't be able to talk to them though you can see them, and they won't be able to see you. There is no contact and communication between the dead and the living. When you see your loved ones and your family crying because of your death, you will cry. I realized that I have left the realm of the living. Then I moved around to check my baby. I was watching my newborn baby and wondering, is there anybody that can take care of my baby like me? I asked, who will raise this child like me? But no one could hear or answer me. That's where my pain was centered. My child is left in the world, 
who is going to raise him. Let me tell you, fathers and mothers, come to Jesus Christ. He is the father of the orphans and when you die, he will take care of your children. I stood in that emergency room for some minutes watching these doctors and nurses struggling to reanimate my body and I had the desire to get back in my body but I had no power. Then suddenly I saw the door of the emergency room opening by itself and there was a powerful whirlwind coming from outside. This was not a normal or natural wind. In fact in our world, this kind of wind does not exist. It was strong. It is the kind of wind that moves things in its way. The wind was so strong that I was like a sheet of paper. The whirlwind got a hold of me and transported me out of the emergency room. I could not resist because I had no strength against this wind which transported me out. In fact, I tried to resist but I had the impression that there were hands in this wind pushing me and exercising forcefulness on me. The whirlwind took me to a place that was dark. I could see the light in a long distance. I began to head towards the distant light with great regret. My head was down. I thought when I reached the light, I could take some rest there. But I realized that as I was moving, the light was also moving away. I walked for a long distance. Then I got tired. Then suddenly the whirlwind seized me again and transported me back inside my body, and then I woke up. This was my first experience of death. When I returned to my body, I saw nurses as they all continued to administer treatment to me. Then, I died again for the second time, and things happened just like in the first instance. I was out of my body. I witnessed the doctor dealing with my body. Then the whirlwind got a hold of me and carried me into darkness. But I landed in my body again. This time when I woke up, I saw more doctors and more nurses. They were doing what they could in order to save me. Later I saw a doctor calling a nurse and telling her that this girl here will die soon, she will not make it through. When these two came close to me, I asked, how can you say that I will not make it to dawn? They replied to me, you shall be fine. Don't worry, in order to calm me down. I said, I heard you when you were saying that I will not make it through to dawn. Beloved, it was when I was talking to them that I saw two persons, I mean, two entities entering the emergency room. They were tall and muscular. They were dressed in khaki. They were humanoid but they had no eyes, no ears, no nose, no hair, and no mouth. Yet they were talking. They were faceless. The Lord revealed to me later that these demons are called slaughterers. These demons are everywhere on earth and they are assigned to every human living on the earth in order to take them to hell. And these demons follow us everywhere. The mission of these faceless demons called slaughterers is to capture the souls of humans who have not received the Lord Jesus or believers who live in sin and transport them to the abode of the dead. These demons are always around and if you died in sin, they will capture your soul and take you to the place of torment and then they will return to earth to continue their mission. These faceless demons are around every single human living on earth in order to take them to the cells of the abode of the dead, the place of torments. There are always two of them for each soul of human on the surface of the earth. They have heads but without faces. When these two demons entered the room, one of them touched me on the left hand and the other. One touched me on my right hand and immediately I ended up out of my body. On leaving my body, I realized that my countenance has changed and looked very ugly and bad. My spiritual body was really bad in comparison to the one laying on the bed in the hospital. I noticed that this body that was laying on the bed was more beautiful and much better than the one I had. Actually the body I had after death was the body of sin that will burn in hell. If you die as a sinner, you will have this ugly body of sin. In my second testimony, I will talk about my second death which happened when I was in right standing with the Lord. I was then dressed in a body of glory far better than this body that we have on earth. 
it was a body of light. When these faceless demons got me out of my body, I noticed that I was a little bit bent. In fact, there was a burden on my back which was my sin and I had to carry them. This burden was heavy for me to carry. I had difficulty moving it. It was painful. Let me tell you. Who are enjoying sin despite preaching and warning from the Lord, they are burdens you will have to carry after death. Then these two demons asked me to move. I was reluctant to move. I felt that these doctors including my family should have been able to see me and what is happening to me. In fact, I looked at my mother and father in the emergency room. I said to myself, is my father really not seeing me? Can he not see these people that are taking me away? I said in my heart, if only my father was able to see me, he could have done something for me. Or he could have snatched me from these demons. He could have fought for me. Beloved, if you don't get rid of sin in your life, you will be alone after death and you will face the consequence of your sin alone. No family member will be with you. Your parents or partners won't be with you. Even your pastor will leave you to continue his work but you will be alone. The demon asked me to move. I was moving but my eyes were on my father and mother. I was moving away and crying, how come they cannot see me so that they can do something for me? I could not move very well because of the burden on my back and the two demons were beating me every time I was failing to move quickly. They have no mercy and no love and while they were beating me, they were also mocking me. They will mock you because you had opportunities to come to Jesus. You had the opportunity to be obedient in order to escape all this, and when you are in front of these demons, you will notice that your mouth is closed. You won't have the courage to complain about their treatment. The road was long and I was beaten mercilessly by these demons because I could not walk quickly. Let me warn you to be careful. Death should not surprise you in sin and the return of Jesus should not find you in sin. As we continued our journey, we finally arrived in a very huge field and in front, there was a royal throne. A huge demon was sitting on that throne. He had two horns and in front of him, there was a very long queue of humans who were apparently dead like me. This demon was holding a scepter. He was laughing, mocking, and despising the dead people that were in the queue. The faceless demons, the slaughterers, were also laughing and mocking. The people in the queue like the demon sitting on the throne. I noticed that the people in the queue were crying. Each person in the queue had two faceless demons, one on his left and the other on his right. Then I saw the person who was the first in the queue crying and pleading to this demon who was sitting on the royal throne to let him go back to earth so that he will repent. I saw the demon on the throne laughing and mocking the person and the faceless demons. They slaughterers were also laughing. They were laughing intensely and mocking him. Then they Huge demon that was on the throne asked three questions to this person. He asked him by saying, You were in the world right but did you receive him? You were in the world, did you obey him? You were in the world, did you serve him? This demon was avoiding to say the name of Jesus Christ because in the realm of Satan, they do not say the name of Jesus. When all of us in the queue heard those questions, we put our heads down. We felt the guilt. Let me warn you to stop playing games and to stop that double life. Come to Christ and be serious. You can be a hypocrite but God can see what you are doing in the secret. When we understood that we were not going back to earth to repent, we all cried and after crying, we started to beg again and asking for grace and forgiveness. When we were asking for forgiveness, the demon sitting on the throne answered us. He said to us, Grace and forgiveness are available on the surface of the earth. You have left. Grace and forgiveness on the earth. There is no grace and forgiveness here. Beloved, there is grace and forgiveness only when you are alive on this earth. Once you are dead, there is no grace or forgiveness. 
those who are in the mortuary, if they have failed to repent in their lives, it is finished for them. As I stood in the queue, I noticed that there were more people joining the queue behind me. These were people who have died after me. They were unbelievers and Christians who were walking in sin like me. In fact, I was a protocol in the church living in fornication. If you come to church by formality or routine and you live anyhow you want, the Lord does not know you. We are living in additional time or extra time because time is finished already. The Lord Jesus said to me, Tell my people we are in an additional time which is really short. Those who watch football know what I am talking about when I say extra time. You must be very careful. When we were in the queue before the throne of this demon, there was a huge screen projecting the life of each one of us standing in that queue. The screen was projecting all the sin and evil we did on the earth. We were full of guilt and shame and we hung down our heads. The screen was also projecting the opportunities that came before us to come to Jesus and to repent and how we missed those opportunities. When I became the first in the queue, they projected on the screen a scene of my life. In that scene, I saw myself in our church serving as protocol. On that day there was a preaching corresponding to my way of life, I mean, fornication. The message was particularly for me. It talked about my lifestyle of fornication. On that screen, we were watching even my thoughts. In fact, the preacher said if anybody is concerned by the message, let them come to receive Christ. When the preacher made that call for repentance, I was saying in my heart that I am serving as a protocol and people know that I am already saved. If I go forward, I will be embarrassed in front of everybody. This was shown to me by this demon to tell me that it was a missed opportunity. I was ashamed of human opinion so I missed an opportunity to repent. Another scene was projected. It was a morning service. I had an opportunity to repent but I failed to do so. They projected another opportunity that I missed from people who preached in public places. There was a call for repentance but I failed to respond. Beloved you should not neglect opportunities to repent that the Lord is placing before you. Because time is running out. This human body is an envelope. You should not try to satisfy its desires and end up in the place of torment. Later I came to understand that we were in the abode of the dead which is divided into two parts. The place of rest where the souls of Christians who walk in the fear of the Lord go and the place of torment. We were in the place of torment. We were supposed to get an access code in order to be placed in a specific area or cell. What I meant by access code is that the burden of sin that was on our back had to be removed and replaced by a label that was to be placed on our chest. The main sin of our lives was supposed to be printed on that label and then placed on our chest. This label could be a thief, a witch, a fornicator, a murderer. This means if you are lost, it is because of the label on your chest which is your main sin. Beloved, there is a sin that you are comfortable with because it has become repetitive but it will take you to the place of torment. This sin will be a label on your chest. What happened is that I stood before the demon that was on the royal throne. He pointed his scepter on my chest in order to print my main sin on a label so that the two faceless demons would take me to my cell. This demon sitting on the royal throne was about to place the label of my main sin of fornication on my chest when I saw the hand of God coming down between me and the demon sitting on the royal throne. Therefore he could not print my sin on my chest. After this incident, the two faceless demons, the slaughterers, took me off the queue in order to place me in my cell. But the issue was that for the cell to be opened, I was supposed to have the label of my main sin on my chest which was the access code to the cell. Therefore my cell could not open because I had no label. Then I observed the two faceless demons talking between themselves and discussing as my cell remained closed. After talking to one another, they resolved to return my spirit to my body. 
When these faceless demons were bringing me back to my body in the hospital, I remember one of the demons talking to his colleague and saying that returning the spirit of this woman back in her body is problematic. The demon said that this woman will surely lay open the whole secrets of the afterlife. Let me tell you, beloved, the demon was right because my testimony is problematic. It is drawing people away from the devil and revealing the secrets of the world of the dead. I am here to warn you to fear the Lord and to come back to Christ, otherwise, you are going to a place of torment which is forever and hell is eternal. The decision to go to heaven or hell is being made by you now. You are making your choice. When the demons brought me back to the hospital, I saw two angels at the gate of the hospital. They demons then threw me around the gate where the angels were standing. The two angels took me and we went where my body was. They opened one leg after another. I tried looking in the legs if I could see the body component but I saw nothing. The body is just an envelope. I tried to look for the bones, I could not see them. I saw the angel inserting my spirit inside my body just like you insert a letter in an envelope. They pushed my spirit and adjusted the head of my spirit to fit the head of my body. They arranged the hands of my spirit properly in the hands of my body. They made sure it was properly adjusted. They arranged my spirit properly in my body. Let me warn you that this body is an envelope that will rot once you die. Let the desire of the flesh not undermine your eternity. Have mercy on your soul. HTTPS slash slash spirit reports dot blogspot dot com slash twenty twenty slash zero one slash sister Irene Ndung one dot HTML